Hi, welcome to uh, Galaxy Con Talks Comics, and uh, I'm uh, doing this on my own for the first time without a producer, so I'm learning how to push buttons. Patty. Mike. You're here. Yes. You made it. I pushed the button, and you're alive. Yay. Hi, Patty. Hi. Uh, uh, how you doing, boss? So today, we're, uh, we're not going to talk comics. We're going to talk autographs. We've got a, we've got a special guest. And uh, it does it does relate to comics because uh, oh, yeah. collecting autographs with comics is an old uh, old old hobby. Absolutely. But uh, we're going to talk about the importance of autograph um, authentication, making sure you've got the right thing. We've got uh, James Spence the third from James Spence Authentication. Uh, it's not named after him, but mm -hmm. close enough. And uh, he is the head of the Florida office. And uh, let's uh, let's end with the stream. What's going on, guys? Good evening, James. Hey, hey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Of course. So, so appreciate, James, appreciate all your hard work. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So you're the vice president of James Spence Authentication, and you guys are a third-party uh, authenticator of, of autographs, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. So, what so at JSA, we, we started our authentication back in May of 2005, and we ha had an existing exemplar file. And that's the most important thing that an autograph authenticator can have. I mean, you can't say whether a, a, a Joe Schuster autograph is real from 1979 without having exemplars to compare it to. Um, and, and valid exemplars for that matter. So we've been comparing and contrasting exemplars uh, to autographs that are submitted through our process uh, since 2005. And, um, you know, we travel to all the major conventions, the, the smaller shows all throughout the country and to Canada. Um, we went down to Mexico to do a big authentication. And um, the value of autograph authentication is very, very important because there's so many forgeries out there. You go onto eBay, and if it's not certified by a reputable authenticator like JSA, you're taking a gamble. You know, buying that Gal Gadot at a, at a it looks like a great price. There's a, a high probability that it's a forgery. So hang on, wait a second, wait a second. Yep. You're telling me that the Gal Gadot cast autograph from Wonder Woman, signed by her, signed by Ben Affleck, and signed by Henry Cavill. I'm sorry, from Batman v Superman. Yep. The three <laughs> of them triple sign that I got on eBay. For eighty nine ninety five, you tell me that's not real. Probably not, Mike. Yeah, that that's, that's too good to be true. Um, you know, I don't know, man. You have to examine it to be to be certain. Now, that doesn't say that people get lucky. You know, I've heard some great stories where you know a person bought a Sean Connery on eBay for forty four dollars because they misspelled Sean Connery's name or didn't write sign. You know, there's a lot of People that listing oh, sure. they just sure. don't know the value of autographs. But most people, they know what they're they're listing, and um, you know even even the the high end stuff. And and sometimes it's it's priced reasonably, you know, where uh, more than I'm sorry, it's priced high, and the thing's still a forgery. So um, do your homework. You know, there's a lot of good dealers out there, but there's also a lot of uh, bad dealers that are looking to rip people off and, and make a quick buck. I mean, our industry is on fire right now. So just be extremely careful buying off of eBay when it's uncertified. You raise an interesting point about uh, an item misspelled because I've done that in my toy collecting uh, chases on eBay. I have looked, something has a weird spelling and I've actually looked for it 
I've altered the spelling a little bit and I found a listing for it that n nobody knows the existence of and I've snatched up at an earlier price. Yes, so. very, very smart. And I, I encourage people to, you know, to do that on eBay. If, if you're obsessed with a certain autograph or a certain toy or whatever, misspell Schwarzenegger. You'll, mm -hmm. find, you'll find a few golden nuggets out there. I mean, it takes effort, but I do it all the time. I'm a huge Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. I collect him. I have over 200 different signed Schwarzenegger stuff from his bodybuilding days all the way until now. I nice. can't get enough of him. And, um, yeah, I, I, I just wish I had the opportunity to meet him. So when GalaxyCon, you know, ramps up again, get that guy to, to show up at one of your, uh, at one of your conventions, Mike. If, if he, he's not the easiest person to nail down. Yeah. Um, so JSA has been around since 2005, but I think uh, autographs kind of are in your life's blood, right? They are, yes. So uh, crazy, crazy story. And I was telling Mike this a couple weeks ago. Um, they just discovered my great grandfather's autograph collection. He used to write to mostly celebrities. He wasn't into the sports genre. He was into the movie stars, into the act actors and actresses. And he wrote to many, many different celebrities in the late 30s and early 40s. And you can only imagine how many of these, these actresses and actors would actually take the time and, and handwrite notes back because the, the amount of requests just wasn't nearly as it is right now. I mean, you write sure. to a celebrity now and you're lucky to even get something back. And it's probably going to be either a facsimile, which is a pre-printed copy of their signature, or it might be secretarial where you know their uh, uh, their front desk receptionist just signs signs their fan notes because these people don't have time to to sign no. autographs. So uh, yeah, that we we actually discovered. Uh, yeah, that's that's my great grandfather. So wow. it's been in my blood to collect autographs to uh, be passionate about this. You know, eighty years, ninety years later, and it's I, I don't think anybody can. <laughs> can say that their great grandfather had the same passion, the same collecting mentality. And uh, when when uh, we discovered this collection, we were just speechless because it's been away from our family for so long. Um, it actually disappeared. My step great grandmother had sold it privately. Uh, this was back in the early 90s. And, um, you know, my father was was involved in autographs. He wasn't doing it full time, but he was going to different shows in the, the New York area. And um, uh, he would always, you know, talk about his great grandfather's collection. And in the early 90s, my step great grandmother, instead of giving it, passing it down to my father, who's, who's James Spence Jr., um, she ended up selling it to a person that we don't even know. So for since 1990, it's been missing. And this was just uncovered about a month ago. And now it's it's thankfully it's back in our possession. We were able to acquire the entire collection. I can tell you it's very very impressive. Uh, Babe Ruth, uh, Lucille Ball, um, Walt Disney, um, Humphrey Bogart, uh, you name it. It's it's a who's who of the '30s and the '40s, and it's just so special because it has our name attached to it. And um, but yeah, I mean autographs have been in our family history since the 1930s, which which is pretty cool. I don't suppose uh, you got a Basil Rathbone in that uh, lot. You know, we probably do. Yeah, we see a lot of uh, Rathbone stuff. It's a cool signature. Very cool signature. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having one of those. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, the babe. Yeah, that's a great sepia tone photograph. That is. Wow. That's a flattering picture of, of my father, but <laughs> yeah, the eyes are on the babe Ruth photograph. Still, a, yeah, that's a great shot. That's a, that a great shot. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, no doubt. So, so your, uh, so your grandfather. I, I was looking at the video earlier. The Babe Ruth envelope. He, uh, he had gotten. You had the envelope that Babe had signed on, and sent it to him. But then inside was another thing that I guess was a was a sheet of paper that your grandfather would send to celebrities. That was like sign here, kind of a thing. Yeah. So it was incredible. I mean, this, this Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth envelope, he not only signed the top of the envelope, but he signed this, this, uh, notation, this, this, this piece that was, uh, just an autograph request, you know, like you said, Mike signed here. And, uh, that was part of his collecting. Mind you, 
Autographs were absolutely worthless back in the 30s. You couldn't sell them for a dollar. Nobody cared. Yeah. Nobody saw any type of value. It was almost like a like a children's like way of saying, oh, I met you know this celebrity. I met Humphrey Bogart. Check it out. There were no phones. There, were, there was no way to prove that you met that person, so you got their autograph. And most of the time, they're, um, they're personalized, which does decrease the value of an autograph. Um, even though you really? might love an entertainment star or a celebrity or a musician, the moment that they write two James on there, you're limiting the uh, the people that would actually buy that piece because there's only so many Jameses in the world. There's only so many Patties in the world. There's only so many Mikes that you know a lot of collectors are are uh, are purists and they want just the autograph, a nice inscription. Um, so. I know it's cool to have you know your favorite celebrity personalize it to you, but if you're looking to invest in that per in that piece, I highly recommend you do not get it personalized. Huh? That's so weird. I I I almost thought at this point that personalization would actually give it some equity to its validity. No doubt, it does. It, it makes it easier to authenticate. You're dealing with additional handwriting. Uh, forgers are less likely to to try and write something extra. Um, so it, on our part, it makes it easier. But if you're looking to sell that on eBay, you know, you need some cash and you just met Lou Ferrigno and you're like, hey, I, I need to get rid of this. Piece. Well, and it's personalized. It's going to sell for probably half the value of an unpersonalized one. I can that's see that. that. Yeah. And a lot of talent knows that. A lot of talent knows that if you're getting something, you know, Personalized, they're like, oh, well, this person's not as likely to sell it as somebody who's asking for just signing, you know, you know, just signing a piece without a name on it. But it's crazy. It's crazy to think about, Mike, because it takes extra work for that person to to personalize it. And I've seen celebrities and athletes go out of their way and say, oh, you know, you look like you're you're going to sell this on eBay. I'm going to personalize this thing. It's just it's more time out of their precious day to to spend uh you know yeah but you know but from the but from the from the um celebrity point of view so patty you were talking about this beforehand you've got a story about something that happened at film festival mm -hmm. but i'll say it from our point of view with the shows you know because we run these celebrity conventions what happens every time is that we have these autograph hounds that will bombard the airport mm -hmm. and so you know they'll uh somehow figure out what flight some people are on and you know we have to send security you know, to meet, you know, the uh, celebrities or have cops there. But some of these guys are really aggressive where they're like, oh, you know, Mr. Shatner, I'm such a big fan. I can't believe I'm meeting with the airport here. I've got 40 pieces. <laughs> Can you sign these? And then I just happen to have these on me. <laughs> you know, when they've got this backpack of all these autographs, but I'm such a big fan. Oh, I'm so thrilled. Can you sign these? And the talent looks at them like, you know, what are you doing with these, man? Oh no, these are just for me and my 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 little nephew. He's a big fan, and we just you know yada yada yada, and that's that's kind of where the personalization comes in. Like the celebrity, nobody wants to say no. Celebrity doesn't want to say no, no. but they also don't want to sit there and sign forty pieces for you or ten pieces, knowing that you're just going to go out and flip them on eBay the next day. So they'll try and be like, well, look, I'll sign one for you. What's your name? You know, not realizing that the guy knows how to get the ink off. That's very knows true. How to get the, knows how to get the marker off, you know, because it's not that hard to get the personalization off, especially when it's it's fairly new. Yeah. Um, and so the, the celeb thinks they're doing a nice thing by signing for the fan. They don't ever want to say no, but, you know, they, they that's that's, I think, a little bit where that comes from. Right. Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. By the way, if you're ever trying to get rid of a personalization, um, the uh, the material to get rid of it is Goo Gone. Goo Gone, most of the time, will make it erased very, very carefully. Now, we, we have equipment that can determine if there's a personalization removal on something. So, you know, when we're certifying, you know, Clint Eastwood and it said like 2ED and you can clearly see 2ED is erased, we at JSA will notate that because we feel – the collector, the old, the end user needs to know that you know that there is something that that happened to this to display as a single signed uh, Clint Eastwood on an eight by ten. Hmm. You, you let me know when you when you get one of those Clint Eastwood, uh, you know, monkey movie posters signed. 
every which way but loose, any which way you can, you know, I'm all in. Yeah, he's a great signature. Yeah, and that's still pumping autographs. And how old is he? Eighty-nine, I think. Eighty-nine. Yeah. Wow. Unreal. Yeah. yeah, he's there. He's absolutely there. So what? Um, ninety. He's ninety years old. May thirty-first was his birthday. Wow. And he's still acting. He's still directing. Is he still the mayor of that that city in California? No. Okay. No, that was that was a Car Carmel, California. No, he, he that was like a one note thing. Okay. Yeah, that, speaking of just keep him as mayor, why the hell not? Clint Eastwood is my mayor. Like, how how cool is that? It it, th it threw off the local elections. They asked him not to run again because they were like, we have people applying for for writing votes who live on the other side of the country and everything. Yeah, he was just yeah. You know. He only became mayor to change some weird parking law or something like that. And once he did that, done uh, yeah. So that's interesting. I wonder what what law it was, what parking law. I don't know. It was it was some it was some really minor municipal thing that just just burned his bacon. So he said, "Screw it, I'll run for mayor and just take it off the books." And of course, so, he too. I mean, who, who the hell's not going to vote for Clint Eastwood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. you got to vote for Clint. So you're saying he's got a really nice signature. Your grandfather had an incredible signature. It would be my my great grandfather. Oh, is that your that's your great grandfather, right? Your great grandfather. My great grandfather. My grandfather, who who passed away in 1985, he was more of a stamp collector. He loved uh, collecting stamps, coins. He did dabble in the autographs, but it's it skipped his generation. And look, look at that! Look at that autograph, James. Yeah, <laughs> look at mine, I guess. Does yours look like that? But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a cool piece. He was he was an usher in Yankee Stadium. Um, he was actually selling beer when Babe Ruth gave his farewell speech. So when he's like kneeling on uh, Bob Feller's bat, my great grandfather was you know selling Schlitz out in <laughs> out in the uh, left field somewhere. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really awesome. <laughs> So this stuff is in my blood. Um, I, I absolutely very, very passionate with autographs. Um, and, and it makes going to work every every day fun. Um, and I and I collect all over the place. I'm, I'm, I collect entertainment. I collect pol political stuff. Um, anything that I see will hold value. Roberto Clemente, Jackie Robinson, that kind of stuff where people aren't signing anymore. Um, Christopher Reeve is, is a great signature to collect. Uh, he's got a beautiful autograph. Uh, anything on Superman is, it, you know, sells for an extreme amount of money. We just did a, uh, a Superman poster, an original Superman poster, a movie poster that was signed by Christopher Reeve and no personalization, nothing. And he just spanked the the poster and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I've never seen one, so I, I couldn't even put a value on something like this, maybe $7,000. And that only appreciates in value when you find those one of a kind pieces. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You're and this right. time, we're talking about uh, you talking about your grandfather's autograph, how beautiful yeah. it was. Good, Patty. Before we do that, so I pulled this off. Oh wow! Oh yeah. Offline, you see his signature in the middle. Um, I think you guys authenticated. I, I found that when I was looking for JSA authentication online. Yep. Yeah. We so, have that. What'd you say? I said we authenticated that. Uh, I want to say a couple weeks ago. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous magazine. So how do you know? Like, so talk us through, you know, Chris has passed. He's no longer with us. Mm -hmm. he, he signed this God knows when. You don't know when he signed it. You don't know how he signed it. So you get this. This comes in. And I'm a huge Superman fan. Patty will tell you. I don't know if you see in my office, you know, all the Superman art and all the Superman posters. Yeah. My Superman poster signed by Richard Donner, not by Chris Reeve. I would kill for a Chris Reeve one. Um, but how do you know that's real? So the, the first step we uh, when we're examining an autograph is to try and date the autograph. So, you know, you mentioned we, we don't know when it was signed. Well, we can pinpoint this particular one. It couldn't have been signed before 1979. That's when the, the magazine was manufactured. So anything right. before that, which, you know, there's there's a few examples of, of Christopher Reeve in the, in the early 70s um, that surfaced. But most of them are going to be from the 80s and the 90s. Um, so this particular autograph, you want to look at anything post-1979. You want to look at something that's flat. Uh, we have, uh, we've authenticated pieces, statues that, that were signed by Christopher Reeve. You don't want a, 
uh, compare it to something that's irregular because you'll sign your name differently on a piece of paper versus a baseball versus a basketball versus a Funko Pop. Um, the, the formation of your letters, uh, the structuring, the spacing between your letters is going to alter based on what you sign. So it's unfair to compare this magazine to, let's say, you know, uh, a baseball signed by Christopher Reeve, which we've authenticated a few of those. Um, so, yeah, you, you want to compare it to those. And uh, again, the most important thing that an autograph authenticator can have is the exemplar file. So uh, we compare the, the spacing between the letters, the initial stroke, where that's located. If there's any retrace C, as you can see, when he forms his C, he retraces it before he comes down to form his H. Uh, which is pretty non-existent where it, it almost kind of just scribbles into the ph mm. christopher um you know you want to look for conviction um you want to look for that uh, the speed uh baseline too you know a lot of forgers mess up when they'll nail the christopher and then they'll pivot and then they'll write reeve on a completely different baseline when you look at your signature mm. you find it so many different times that your baseline is usually right on point sometimes and it usually happens with like left-handed uh, signers. Um, baselines do alter where, you know, uh, for instance, Barack Obama's autograph, um, the, uh, the Barack is actually elevated off the baseline almost every single time in comparison to his O. So if you see something that has, you know, identical baselines on, on an autograph like that, that's a red flag. It's not 100%, but you can start adding up the irregularities and that's that's exactly what we do. We pinpoint different things of like, you know what, that's weird. All right, let's let's look into, you know, the the shapes of the E's and Reeve. Usually his first E is larger than his second. Let's let's see how many examples uh, exhibit that. So we analyze the hell out of autographs to the point where we're, our eyes are so calibrated to certain autographs where we can almost sense it. It becomes in uh, like a sixth sense when we're looking at an autograph. And immediately, you know, when, when I sense a forgery, it, it, it almost like I get that spidey sense in me that I can see, all right, you know, there's something wrong here. What is it? And then, you know, we compare and contrast with other authenticators and we all have our own strengths. And, you know, certain people specialize in just uh, vintage entertainment. We have we have a guy that that's all he does. He does Marilyn Monroe. He does Frank Sinatra. Um Rathbone, <laughs> you know, that's his specialty. So that focus is very, very important. You can't know every autograph off the top of your head. It's impossible. Sure. Now, when you say baseline, uh, are you talking like a sense of, like, so it was one hand, one stroke, like the mistake you're talking about is people will they'll spend a time writing Chris. So like, ah, okay, that's good. Now the Reeve and there's a, a, a shift of micro millimeters and stuff like that. Is that what you mean by baseline? Exactly. Yeah, so a lot of forgers don't realize that they're so focused on the formation of the autograph that they lose sense of, I, I didn't throw any conviction down here. This thing looks like it was, it was, it's all deliberate. It, it looks almost traced. Um, so, which brings you know to the people uh, like Tim Curry right now. That's a difficult autograph to authenticate because it's it's just it, it, it's deteriorated. So in most cases where we're not witnessing a Tim Curry or you know, it, it's not just on point to what we are used to seeing, we might go inconclusive on that versus fail it because it's unfair to fail something that's just such a mess, like a George Lucas autograph. And the guy's autograph is literally one motion. It's like a loop and then a line out. So you can only imagine that that is a tar huge target for forgeries. Yeah. It's valuable and there's absolutely nothing to, to that particular autograph. So it makes our jobs difficult, but we do have that option. We can go inconclusive where, hey, I just don't know. Is is that like the three metrics? Uh, it's a pass, fail, or inconclusiveness? Or can you, have you ever, do you have the option to err of, we are fairly certain, but is there a level like that or? Yeah, you know, and they're, they're, and usually we'll go inconclusive on that because we, we have to be certain when we put our JSA letter of authentication on anything. We have to be concrete. This, this is going to sell for an astronomical amount of money. It's our name behind that autograph. Yeah, there's George oh, God, Lucas. Jesus. You wouldn't know if that's George Lucas or, you know, uh, Derry Lee Lewis or something. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a third grader learning how to write a cursive W. Exactly. But now I just did a search and I find this. 
and and this brings up my next question yes so that that is right there is a vintage uh george lucas um you know, it was probably signed in the 70s, I would think. I mean, I don't have my exemplar file here with me right now, but you can read every single letter in his name. And then you look at the the one that you posted before and you're like, what the hell happened? So so signatures change. Signatures evolve. <clears throat> yeah. Which goes back to what you said about the time of 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 identifying the time that is purportedly autographed, correct? It's, it's only fair to determine that time and then focus on exemplars from that time um, to just, and, and most autographs that may, might be vintage, they, they might get thrown away because a collector might say, this, this doesn't look like George Lucas's autograph. This is like secretarial or something. You know what? I'm just going to chuck it. Instead of doing some research, sending it to us for authentication, hey, you know what? It's it's worth it to just know exactly what you have versus throw it away or give it away or, you know, think it's fake. Um, you know, we've surprised a lot of people like that where they brought in a vintage um, autograph and we just, we, we blew them. Like how this, this doesn't look anything like their autograph. And I'm like, well, look at your own social security card. Does your social security card look like your autograph right now? So that kind of, you know, brightens the light bulb up and uh, it's a good comparison. Yeah, Cause there are, there's the there's there's a signature that you would uh, put on like a formal contract, or your wedding license, or something like that. There was that is that signature that we have, and then there's a hurried yeah. Here you go, here you go, kid. Here you go, sir. Yeah, yeah. I love you too. Thanks, bye. You know. So I imagine that these factors have to weigh into to your adjudications all the time. Yeah, I mean, it, there's they're they're standing up autographs they're sit down autographs um you know there's pay, we got, we're going paid autographs versus free autographs uh, <laughs> it's different yeah, well, that's yeah. true because we get something out that shows and you can tell you know we'll have somebody who has to give the show a certain amount of autographs or whatever and when they're doing they're doing sign outs and you can see that sometimes they rush them through as opposed to when they sign for the fan who was paying, who was sitting with them. And then as they get to, you know, piece, and then also when they do private signings, when you get to piece number 300, as opposed to piece number 10, mm -hmm. that, that autograph starts to not look as clean. It's a little sloppier. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. You get tired. Try and sign your name 300 times. It's, it's exhausting. Hey, have, you, have you ever noticed that, uh, that maybe someone because uh, maybe I say like the past like 20, 30 years when celebrityism and autographs have become a commodity. Have you seen somebody just change their autograph and their, their signature in the autograph just to be concise and easier just for that? So it's easy for me to go just like that for everything as opposed to their uh, George M. Smythe the third, you know, but. Yeah, you know that that it's crazy to see. It's crazy to like think that you can actually change your autograph. But we've seen athletes and celebrities do it. Um, can't think of any celebrities off the top of my head. But Barry Bonds, for instance, he immediately comes to my 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 brain with how he's evolved so drastically, like from his '90s style signature to like in 2000, he just decided to completely change his autograph. And then you know, fast forward to like 2008, he morphed it again. Um, and then he kept it consistent too. It's not like you're, you're trying to like make your J different or, you know, make the S different. And then you do it that one time, but to, to have that consistency, um, that's, I, I just don't know how they do that. What's even more amazing is, uh, Ricky Henderson used to be able to sign his name simultaneously with both hands. So right and left hand. Oh, wow. And, and people have seen this. And, and if anybody had got Ricky Henderson, you know, at, at the ballpark in the 90s, they might have witnessed this. But he was able to sign his name perfectly. I mean, they had different angles because you're using your right and left hand. And he would sign and finish his name on, like, a baseball and a bat. And I thought that was so incredible. Like, wow. I've never seen anybody else do that. But Well, these sports guys <laughs> were, were the first – you know, Patty, before, you know, celebrities were really doing conventions and sports guys have been doing this for years. And, and you know, the sports shows would pay these guys by the hour. 
So these guys would come in and they'd be like, okay, you know, you gotta, you gotta get through X amount of signatures and X amount of, you know, in, in, uh, in three hours, two hours, four hours, whatever. And so they were, the faster they could sign, the sooner they get the hell out of there. Mm -hmm. Right, James, I think that's how it works. So, so these guys learn how to sign real fast. So, you know, hearing that a guy signing with two hands, I mean, that takes it to a whole next level. Yeah. Ricky being Ricky. So, um, I gotta, so I gotta wonder if there's like collectors who want a left and a right-handed on Ricky. It's you're, you're looking at a right angle, right angle to the autograph, and then a left angle to the autograph. I, um, I knowing that he did that, I would just have to. I my life wouldn't be complete unless I knew I had. Oh, that was from his left hand, and that one's from his right hand. Yeah, yeah. Usually, easiest way to tell is if you're writing left. If you have a, a left-handed signer, usually, not always, but that. That autograph will lean to the right. Mm -hmm. Right-handed, it's going to lean to the right. I'm sorry, right hand is going to lean to the left. Sure. So that's another easy way to spot a, a forger, sure. somebody that you know is left-handed, like like a lot of the presidents. They're mostly all left-handed uh, signers, so usually leaning to the uh, the right there. Oh, interesting. That that yeah, most people would think that you just oh you just but yeah. Fascinating. We were talking last week about uh, Jack Kirby. Yes, and about differences in autographs. So, Patty, you're gonna you're gonna see. So, look at this autograph, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're used to seeing from a Jack Kirby autograph, right? That's the Jack Kirby autograph we all know and love. Mm -hmm. Now, now look at this. Now that's. A different autograph. I mean, it's one is flat, one, you know, one is cursive, one is, is not. Mm -hmm. um, and this came up because I was talking to a buddy of mine last week who was asking me, is this autograph, is an autograph legit? Because he had had a, he had gotten a signed comic from me back when I had a store in the 90s and, uh, and it's signed by Stan and Jack. And I don't remember getting it for him, but I, I had, uh, I, I did, and I looked at the autograph, and it looked, it looked like, it looked like this type of an autograph, right? The non-cursive one, and I'm like, well, that doesn't make any, you know, sense. So I started digging, and because I'm used to that, the the cursive autograph, and then I found dozens of examples of both types of autographs. So it just depended on the day of the week how he was going to sign. Yeah, we, we call it script versus, you know, uh, like a, a signature. You know, the script is more printing. You know, uh, Neil Armstrong did that, the the astronaut. He had a, a print version of his signature, and then, you know, he would be able to sign his signature. So uh, mostly on, like, personalized, if he knew somebody, if he was writing a note. And we, we all do that. I mean, if we're writing a thank you note, I'm not going to sign my name. I'll just write out Jimmy. So that it's usually the case when you see that uh, that script version of the autograph but you also want to be careful because that right there is easier to forge than yeah. the signature so there's a lot of that um and then you got to be careful of the secretarials and and jack kirby uh what was it his wife uh, mike we were talking about this in, in depth I, I didn't know exactly who was signing jack kirby's autograph through the mail but uh you mentioned that his wife was it, it's possible that there are some autographs out there that especially towards the end of his life. There's some, some theory, some thought that perhaps some of Jack's signatures aren't, aren't Jack, especially towards the very end that his wife was signing them, especially things that went through the mail. You know, it's easy for somebody to sign it, send it back or, or, or sign some things. Not that I am okay with a Roz Kirby autograph. <laughs> There's, right, still, there's, still, there's still value in that too. People collect secretarial versions of that that famous person's wife signing their name. Believe it or right. not, it still has value. And and there's there's you don't you know you don't know what was going on at the time when when um, when especially with older guys when when you know you get into that you know guys who are in the nineties. And, you know, uh, we've seen it in comics where sometimes, you know, older guys, uh, we've seen, you know, where, you know, uh, wives have helped 
finish off some uh there, there used to be stories about like marty nodell who created the green lantern maybe his wife was helping you know color in some of the drawings or would draw you know the 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 lantern ring on there or, or some things that she would help out and so you're getting part of a marty and part of a you know marty's wife on this piece does it make it any less real no it's it's still kind of a marty but it's you know he couldn't do the whole thing anymore yeah that's that's fascinating and um, who knows? We might be in getting involved in uh, comic illustration authentication because I, I could see, you know, a huge value of entirely done, you know, by the artist versus half done, you know, by one of his assistants. And Walt Disney was famous for that. You know, he had multiple um, uh, proteges and, and apprentices that would, that would sign his mail for him. And, um, you know, they, they were artists. You know, and they, they were able to draw Mickey Mouse just like he would. Um, and they would sign Walt Disney. Well, there's there's different, you know, variations of Walt Disney's autograph. And most of the time you'll see, especially the earlier versions of Walt Disney, um, it's in script. It's all printed. And then most of the checks that you see out there. Right, You were showing me something the other day about a Walt signature. Yeah. That wasn't a Walt signature. No. No. And unfortunately, it wasn't. And, um, you know, anything through the mail. um was was done by a secretary for Walt Disney. I mean, this guy was just you know one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time. Um, I'm sure he had zero time to actually sign his hand mail. Well, it. we we run into that in comics with Bob Kane. Yeah, you know the majority of stuff signed by Bob Kane isn't Bob Kane. Uh, but true. what happened? With Bob had uh, ghost artists who were drawing in his style, showing Moldoff being one of the more more famous ones who for years decades would draw as bob kane as a ghost yeah sign sign it as bob kane and there's you go there's your bob kane original but it's not bob yeah and, bob. and it was very easy to forge bob or secretarily sign i shouldn't say forge it because bob did give that secretary <laughs> liberty or that artist liberty yeah. to sign, sign those autographs um the one telltale on real bob kane autographs is you have to look very, very closely, but on the E of the cane, he actually crosses his E from right to left instead of the conventional way from left to right. So I hope no forgers are watching this video right now, but a very easy uh, telltale. You could see the uh, the uh, uh, the pen pressure, you know, from that that uh, that streaking from right to left. And it's a very odd way to, to print an E. I mean, just try and do it. You, you just draw the, the, the vertical line down, and then you have to cross your E's the opposite way. Well, real Bob Canes have that consistently. Curious. Hmm. Yeah. So. Personally, I, I, personally, I'd be more interested in a Shelley Moldoff uh, Batman than a Bob Kane. Just <laughs> – but, for collect, but in, again, this is the difference between someone – on the fan side and what we know about Bob Kane now and everything else to yeah, a collector who just says, no, 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 Bob Kane, creator of Batman. Cause you know, value. And, and, and yeah. I don't take any way from, the way from that crowd because I'm sure. Well, but, but, but Patty, a real Bob Kane is more valuable than a Shelly Moldoff. Uh, I agree. Photograph. But you know, Shelly drew the strip. You know, he's not the first ghost artist. Bob always had ghost artists. No, I mean, his, his whole, yeah, his whole chain. And there's a number of those old comic guys who had ghost artists, and and it was common for them to sign as as the person. You know, the the Disney stuff, like you said, James. You know, <coughs> Disney's names on everything, but how much? What did he actually? How much did he actually sign? And you know, the Disney animation stuff. He's not. He wasn't the animator. He he was he was an entrepreneur, like you said. You know. Uh, um, um I was really drawn this stuff, you know, at the beginning. Yeah, when you get when you get into like original art, yeah, yeah, like most collectors know or they should know that what they're getting is great, especially the older stuff. It's like, well, you know, there's everybody had an assistant back then, so that that penciler may have done the pencils or the inks or done the backgrounds or whatever. But in autographs, though, that's yeah, that's uh, but. Going on to about like original sketches and stuff, that's a that's a trench. I don't think too many people have explored the idea of going into. All right, this is an original sketch of this character. Let's say a Jack Kirby Dark Side. Okay, how much did Jack may have done in the seventies, and how much may have he farmed out to an assistant? 
right and, and, and just the the levels on that yeah that, that's a great point and most of the time we don't mention the sketch in our letter of authentication because just like you said that the, the artists are possibly better at drawing mickey mouse's autograph versus walt disney being able to do it so yeah. <laughs> you want to stay away from that um you know there, there could have been uh, a dozen sketches and then Walt just went down the line and just signed every single one of them. So yeah, in, in most, in, in most of the time, I mean, we, we stay away from authenticating the actual sketch or the, um, the drawing or anything like that, unless it's, yeah. it's so obvious that, you know, it's within, you know, the same pen and the same pen pressure. Charles Schultz, for instance, used to draw Snoopy all the time. Um, that's an easier one for us to, to authenticate. We just see so much Charles Schultz, Another very, very um, valuable autograph that's spiked in value over the past years. And it was a shame to hear that his entire estate um, in one of the, the wildfires in California was completely burned to the ground. And he had some one of ones um, in that in that estate. And it just it's mm. it's big to hear like how how much of <clears throat> history in, in peanuts just completely burned burned to the ground because he kept all of his original strips i believe i don't think he ever like even gave them away i want to say that they're they're archived and still owned by the state estate i hope they're archived somewhere um yeah that's that's a i love walt disney's autograph it's beautiful that's so one of the autographs that we authenticate so now this this piece so you, you know you guys do two kinds of authentication i think really there's the um there's a stuff where you um, you have the cards, but then you have the letter of authenticity. Yes. So tell me about this with the different processes of what you guys do. So for the uh, where you see the certificate of authenticity, that's for items that are valued under two hundred dollars. Now you know that's uh, JSA perception value. Some some you know somebody might think that they're you know Lou Ferrigno. Uh, Funko Pop is worth a million dollars, but in reality, it's worth probably like a hundred bucks, uh, depending on you know the inscriptions and all that kind of stuff. So that would get our basic certification. Um, anything that involves a, a letter of authentication, you're looking at items that are valued over two hundred dollars. Um, it's a much more detailed description of the piece. You take a size of the cut, like you see here in Walt Disney. Um, we uh, determine the type of pen, which is a ballpoint pen. Uh, it's blue. If there's any manufacturing stampings on there, um, if there's any dating, we'll notate that. And also, uh, we image every single one of our letters of authentication, uh, the, the piece. So when you go onto our website, jsaloa.com, um, you can see an image of your item. And uh, when you're selling an item, especially a high-valued item, uh, the person looking to buy that always loves to check the JSA database because you never know with Photoshop and all the crazy technology out there. Um, it's so easy to fool people. So you're able to go right to the source and see if JSA authenticated that. Yep. It looks exactly like the piece that I'm looking to buy. And, um, yeah, so that, that's the difference. And we also have a third uh, service mic and we do this a lot. Uh, uh, you know, when we're at the, the cons like galaxy con, uh, we have a witness cert. So right. you know, if we're, we have a JSA representative witness every single autograph that gets signed. And then we put our JSA witness uh, certification label on there, and that guarantees the autograph to be real. No questions asked. We saw it get signed. Um, we weren't around when Walt Disney was signing autograph, so it is our opinion that this uh, Walt Disney autograph is, is authentic. Have you ever encountered anyone who has forged your letters of, of credential on an item? Yes. So uh, there are quite poor attempts. <laughs> at trying to uh, forge our letter. I mean, we go to great lengths. Uh, you, you know, you have a JSA letter of authentication. It's, it's on our watermark stationery. Um, it's signed by uh, one of our lead authenticators. It's, it's also notarized. So we have a staff that watches the signature of the lead authenticator. They notarize it. And then all that information is populated into our website with the image. So we try to make it virtually impossible for people to forge our letters. Of authentication, but people try anything. Um, I've oh, I, I can't. I can't imagine between people trying to forge your actual uh, credentials and and the stuff you've gotten in from goobers. Again, ah, I heard if you sign it with your left hand, that it'll look authentic. You know, oh, that honey, let's, let's talk about this, James. So before we started to get to real authentication, you know, for decades, you know, uh, especially at least in comics. 
we used to do these these COAs, these certificates of authenticity. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point in time, eBay is like, well, you can't sell an autograph on eBay without a COA. And then there are some shows that will sell their own COA that comes with, you know, I remember a certain show in Orlando, Patty, that, you know, oh, for $10, you could buy our COA that will certify that this thing was signed here at this show. And I'm like, that's great. But what, what, okay, so now I got a piece of paper that says this is authentic. So what if I just put it with a different piece that's not the same piece? And then, okay, what if I go replicate that COA and just make copies and change it up? What, what good is a COA? So what you guys do is you, um, on, on, on um, most of the stuff, you put a, a holographic sticker on some things. I don't know if you did it on that Disney piece um, where you have the letter of authenticity that goes with it, with the photo and with everything. And you have a database that kind of backs it up. But the, uh, I know that I have seen so much fraud in my day be, with people just faking COAs or, or this is my favorite is when you see the same photograph of a piece getting signed for 15 years, like the same guy selling, you know, he's selling the same autograph from the same actor from 15 years ago with the same photo of proof that that, that, that signing took place. And then at a certain point you go, I'm sure that guy signed 50, hundred, 200, 300 pieces. But I don't know that he signed five thousand, you know, three thousand of these, so that you're selling one every every couple of weeks for fifteen years. Yeah, it's unfortunate, Mike. I mean, that, that that's the bait and switch type of deal, and that that happens a lot on Amazon and eBay. In fact, uh, there was a piece that was sent to us uh, not too long ago, and it failed. And um, I had a client client contact me, and he said, "I said he's, he's, he's he said uh, Jimmy like." isn't this the same item that I bought off of eBay? Check this eBay listening. And I said, compare them. I said, that's a different autograph. That's a completely different autograph. And he's using that stock image and he's sending out the, the babies, the children that this, that this oh, right. image, uh, you know, generated. So that, that happens a lot. Um, and, you know, going back to the COAs where, you know, there was no like certification label that, um, you know, people put on there. Well, People are getting very, very crafty with this. And now, you know, the uh, the Comic-Cons that, that do issue their own uh, COAs, well, think about, you know, if they have somebody like, I don't know, Gal Gadot, they're very, very expensive autograph, okay? And um, a person brings in a Gal Gadot 8x10 that they had at home that they didn't get signed in, at that show, and they bring it up to the authentication booth where there's, you know, a couple people standing there and they, they're not trained authenticators like JSA and they're just putting the certification because Gal Gadot is signing a hundred feet away. Well, th that could be a problem there too. So uh, yeah, yeah, that was exactly when Mike talked about the convention that I always noticed about those things was that that booth for those guys was over here, but the celebrity signing were way, way over there. There wasn't even a visual sight line that you could see somebody come from the table and walk on over to them. Pat, Patty, it happened. It happened when I was at the JSA booth. This was going back four years ago. And a person, you know, there was a, there was a celebrity signing there. It was a very, very expensive autograph. And, uh, you know, we were going through, there was a huge line. Uh, there's probably about 50 different people. And then a gentleman came up and he had three pieces and they looked completely different from how this, how the celebrity was signing. And I, and I looked at him, I said, well, where did you get these three pieces? And I turned the photo over and it had this like generic hologram on it. He goes, Oh, I just got them downstairs. And I said, you didn't get this signed here. He goes, Oh no, I didn't. Uh, isn't it the certification? <laughs> so you know, we're, we catch people quite often yeah. trying to do that. So it's very, very important to have a seasoned authenticator certifying the items, even if you're, you know, you're a couple hundred feet away from the celebrity. Um, yeah, those, it's unfortunate, but that does happen. And you got to be extremely careful with that. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't imagine it. I, I, because, yeah, again, back in the back in the day, I just imagined well, what stop guys from just coming in and with a stack of forged stuff and just getting the certificate of authenticity, you know, for the extra five ten dollar upsell from 
somebody who looks like they had no authority to judge. It was just, oh, ten dollars. What's the item? Here you go. Boom. You know, congratulations. Like, right. and yeah. They might not even know who the celebrity is. They're just who who signed this? Yeah, an old an older lady who's never <laughs> you know who wouldn't know an autograph from a. You know who's standing there taking your ten dollars? Is going okay. Who do I sign this out? All right, who's okay? Here you go. Enjoy the day. Yeah, you know. Uh, last yeah, usually she runs the lost and found, but you know. <laughs> now she's putting stickers on things. Yeah, you know, and that's nothing. Yeah, not against her, but uh, but the it 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 shows the level of dedication and the level of science that goes into your work, and and you basically are a forensic expert. You know, it, it, you have to, you have to be very, very careful out there. There's just too many forgeries out there to spend your hard-earned money on. Um, you want to make sure it's properly authenticated, and that just goes to, uh, you know, one of the points a lot of people make, especially in the early days, where people would get an autograph uh, signed at a show, and they're like, "Why do I need the certification? Like, I saw it get signed." Our usual response to that is a very, very valid question. Um, our response to that is, well, are you going to hold on to this for the rest of your life? Like, and some people say yes, but you can't, you know, you don't know what's going to happen 20 years from now. I mean, we all didn't know what, what happened in, in mid-March, right? So um, it's, it's much easier to just get that item, to get the autograph authenticated right then and there. We make ourselves available and then it's ready to sell. Whether you want to sell it two weeks from now, two months from now, 10 years from now, it's already done. And um, rather, and we get this a lot too, where, you know, uh, I've got 15 autographs and I, you know, I thought about getting uh, them authenticated and now I understand the importance of them. I want to submit them all. Well, you're going to pay more now because that, that con is gone. And we were, you know, we usually offer a special, like we do a galaxy con, um, any signer that is signed at the show, uh, we offer a $10 special. And our, our COAs range from 20 to $30. So 50% off, take advantage of that, guys. Um, it's a small investment for just a, a great future investment. That yeah, we always try and put you guys over by the celebrity area so people can come over to you, find out what you're about, and then take take advantage of that um, on site. <clears throat> the I, I pulled up a, a, a Taylor Swift uh, autograph there. How, how, how did uh where where do I go get where, where can I get myself a T Swift uh, autograph? That's a, I got a MySpace.com URL on it. I mean that's uh my <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. been a long time. Wow. So the um, I'm scared to open my old MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got so you've got a, a lot of stuff that you guys look at like we were talking like you have old Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel stuff right in your files mm -hmm. oh yeah that is there uh, anything special about their their autographs um about those guys pretty pretty consistent signatures uh they're they're beautiful autographs and you can read every letter in their name um and Stan Lee even kept that pretty consistent I mean you know the guy the poor guy was signing until you know what was his last uh his last show and then the autographs that we actually we we actually saw get signed i mean you wouldn't even recognize that it was stan lee so let me ask you that question were are you were you do you see any secretarials for stan that is a very very good question um you know what? I'm going to pull up a database real quick. And I'm going to see if we've ever seen one. You know, in the JSA Exemplar database, there are no secretarial versions of Stanley. That's pretty fascinating. So. Now, I'm not saying that one doesn't exist. It's just one never hit us. And we, you know, are able to confidently label that as secretary there's plenty of forgeries out there and there's very very yeah i mean he was a uh, yeah he he was he was a signing machine <clears throat> literally to the end yeah yeah the guy just loved meeting people and you know just embracing what he created i mean that was just an unbelievable he's an unbelievable person yeah, I mean, he, I, was, I, he was the poster child for the comic industry for a, a very long time oh yeah very long time 
So, okay. Um, Patty, what else you want to know about, about this stuff? I, I assume you also get items, correct? As well as, like, say, flats, pictures, or publications. What's been the craziest item? You don't have to say what the, the, the name was, but what's been the craziest item someone has had to send to you and say, hey, there's a lamp, but at the bottom, I think it's got, you know, <laughs> you know Jack Curry or whatever, you know. Yeah, no, we, we get some crazy, crazy items that you're like, what? We had a, uh, a prosthetic leg authenticated. So there was a, there was a baseball commissioner by the name of Bowie Kuhn. And uh, he had uh, he had a prosthetic leg for most of his life. And when he went to upgrade his prosthetic leg, he used to hang out at a local bar. And he became such good friends with the bartender that he actually took the leg after he got his new leg and gave it to the bartender and signed it. And the bartender, you know, this was back in the, the early 80s, hung it up in his bar. <laughs> of course. <laughs> And then the bar, the bar ended up closing down and, you know, they were auctioning off a few things and a collector ended up finding the prosthetic leg, submitting it to us for authentication. It passed. Um, that's, that always hits me as the most unusual item that we've ever authenticated, a prosthetic leg. Wow. You know, anything could beat that. What are some of the, uh, the cooler things? I, I don't mean valuable. I mean the coolest stuff that you personally have. Um, you know, man, I have a, I just picked it up. I have an Andy Warhol, a dual signed Andy Warhol, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, oh, that's odd. Yeah. Uh, a piece. It, it's, um, it's actually, well, I'm just trying to look around my office to see. Um, it's, it's one of those, uh, those newspaper magazines. Are you guys familiar with those? The Andy Warhol he used to do like all different celebrities. He had one that had Mick Jagger on it. Yeah, I've 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 seen a, I've seen the yeah. yeah. They're they're paper. They're, it's it's like a paper magazine. Um, but in any event, he did one of Arnold Schwarzenegger you know, smoking a cigar. So uh, Andy Warhol had signed it, and then uh, just recently got Arnold Schwarzenegger to sign it. So that that's probably like one of the coolest pieces I own. I mean, it's it's so unique. How many Arnold yeah Warhol, Andy Andy Warhol pieces are out there? Are you talking about Interview Magazine? Yes, Interview Magazine. That's it. Right, I remember Interview Magazine, yep. Yeah. The huge, huge, literally the only magazine bigger than uh, Life Magazine. Yes. Yeah, yeah that thing was a monster. Mm -hmm. it, made, it made the uh, old Rolling Stone yes. magazine, that's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it made the old Rolling Stone look uh, puny. Wow. Yeah, we see all sorts of cool things. I mean, you know, you just pick a, a topic, <clears throat> I can probably think of something that we've authenticated that political was. some cool, cool political things yeah um let's see um my god um like dual sign monica Lewinsky, bill clinton pieces oh god yeah <laughs> 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 we authenticated those uh you know um uh, and we, you know you can you it's possible to collect a uh, personal check from every president throughout throughout history believe it or not you can get a george washington check and he's not the toughest one believe it or not mm, i believe it the newer presidents are like impossible to find because we just don't write checks anymore exactly so find, like a barack obama signed check hmm oh wow they're, they're just, yeah they're scarce um oh wow yeah yeah no have you ever gotten the same item or autograph more than once? Maybe, oh. maybe. Oh, so you do. You got something that maybe you you had to fail, and then eighteen months later, a new. I just got. I just got this. Can you authenticate this for me? Oh God, yeah. We we've seen. Um, you got a couple of bad pennies. We we've seen the same item submitted uh, within the same week. So we'd fail it, and then. You know, the, the submitter must have returned it to whoever he got it from. And then it popped back on eBay, sold to another person that had no idea, submitted it again. Um, I've seen the same, you know, there, there's just unusual balls like, um, you know, like Mickey Mantle would, would write whatever. I mean, he would write like F. Willie Mays or he would write, you know, <laughs> just crazy things like that. So, you know, certain autographs do stick out. And, um, you know, we, 
will continue to just fail the item numerous times? That's that's a great question because you know you just laugh. You're like, I saw this thing yes, I saw this thing last week. I guess he's probably saying, oh, wait, I saw this two years ago, but literally a week and a half. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, we don't tag anything that fails our authentication process. Yeah. We don't do any, any type of, you know, uh, uh, secret chip or invisible ink. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, you, you are submitting this to us. It is our, it's, it's a, it's an expert opinion. So we're not going to destroy your item if we believe it to be bad. Uh, so there's a uh circulate here's your uh, george washington check <clears throat> yeah but, uh, yeah I'm those are those are about i think those are going for about twenty five thousand now but this stuff continues to appreciate because there's I, so few in existence i i honestly i think that's all things considered that's not bad yeah i mean i mean really I, mean, I, I, I can't afford it but you know <laughs> I, th I think this stuff is solid investment pieces. I mean, people, you know, put all their money in stocks and bonds. I mean, I've seen autographs spike in value. Um, you know, whoever thought Dr. Anthony Fauci's autograph would, would be on eBay right now for $4,000. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I, you know, it's um, it's funny. Uh, you know, like, um, we, you know, we do a lot of stuff with, you know, with celebrities. And then you, you got to think at a certain point in time, they're just not going to be with us anymore. Mm -hmm. And then what's out there is out there. So, you know, you, like if you want a Leonard Nimoy, there's a certain amount of Leonard Nimoy autographs out there. That's it. And then God, you say you want a Star Trek poster to be signed by, you know, Nimoy and Shatner. Well, you mm -hmm. can still have Bill sign something. He's, he's almost 90 years old. But you can't get Nimoy anymore. And yeah. so how many of those, like there's like Walt Disney, there's no more that are ever going to be made. That's the great thing about autographs, original art autographs, the collectibles. They're so unique. I mean, you're talking about, you know, uh, you know, Stan Lee, he signed a lot of things, especially in the later part of his life, but that's it. There's no more, no more are ever going to be made. No more. There's no more JFKs. There's no more, you know, uh, um, Lou Gehrig's. There's no more Babe Ruth's. That's it. It's one of a kind. And we're still talking about Babe Ruth 100 years later. Yeah. We're still talking about Lou Gehrig 100 years later. People that, you know, baseball is the first sport back back on TV in the COVID, right? Um, so the the investment the investment quality of this stuff is, well, well look, it's, it's, this is it. You know, we... Um, you know, I used to, I I'm a, was a big comic collector, and I've kind of shifted more to comic art. And my my interest in comic art has been, well, the pages are one of a kind. Like you can't really replicate, you know, comic art artwork. Almost the same could be said for autographs. Is, you know, there's only so many checks signed by a person. There's only so many baseballs signed by this person, and there could be five thousand. But once that person's gone, right, no more. And that's why I always encourage people to get something unique signed, not just an eight by ten, not just you know, even if it's a rare Funko, you know, that's a good investment. There's there's only so many of these out there. They're not going to make any more of these. Get that rare Funko signed if it's it's well, it's Funko add add value to that. Well, that's an interesting thing. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap up soon. So we've kept you a bit, but I, I just want to talk about Funko <laughs> real quick. Um, Funkos have really revolutionized um, autograph collecting on a specific item. Like more people are getting before Funkos, it was eight by tens, and that was it. I mean, people got posters, people got other things, but the quantity in which people are getting Funkos signed is out of this world. I've never seen anything like it, other than eight by tens, and this craze kind of popped up out of nowhere. It, it did. And we authentically, I can tell you, oh my God, the amount of Funkos that come through both of our offices. We have an office up in New Jersey when you have the office down here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't authenticate at least 20 Funko Pops that are signed by whoever, you know, the voice voice actress, uh, you know, the entertainment star, the, uh, the musician, um, 
got to be careful with Funkos now because you can move them flat. And the mm. technology out there is that there's a, an auto pen machine that all you have to do is program a oh. little autograph in there. And a pen, a paint pen, will sign the exact same um, uh, autograph that you program into this thing. And they're pretty affordable. I mean, I think they're like a thousand bucks for this auto pen machine. It's a great investment for a forger, but it's very, very obvious for our eyes that are calibrated to see what what an auto pen looks like. And an auto pen, um, you know, it has a very heavy initial stroke, so it's almost like a, this heavy dot before it starts its movement. And then at the very end, it also has that exact same uh, pen pressure dot. So there's just no conviction at all throughout the autograph. It's very hesitant. It's very mechanical looking. But you throw that thing on eBay, and it's going to fool anybody. I and mean, you, you you won't be able to pick up uh, you know on those on those characteristics that I'm talking about. So just be be extremely careful. You know, buying signed Funkos that are high value um, that look kind of slow. Um, and I encourage you all to to have your items authenticated. Well, there's so many. Well, there, but you know, if you look for signed Funkos online, I mean, uh, there's there's a good deal that are authenticated by by JSA or other authentication services. Yeah. And then I always find it odd if there's Funkos on there that aren't authenticated. Why haven't you gotten it authenticated and paid <coughs> extra? You know, whatever the fee is. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're a dealer who's dealing in this, these things, pay the extra couple of dollars, get the get the providence, mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah. and, it, and, and it's been you know, and we have dealers all over the place. Some that have just started using us because they just realized I could sell my product faster. You know, they might have an unbelievable reputation. There's a lot of people out there that don't have any authentication. But they have all real autographs because they're just they've been in the industry for a long time they know exactly where to get their autographs some they, sometimes they get all their autographs in person but they just don't believe in the authentication end of it that eventually starts to go away because the business side of you says wait a minute somebody in portland oregon doesn't know who i am or my business i could put this up with a jsa cert certificate they know jsa I'll be able to sell my unique items worldwide because I have this third party backing us. There's only a few uh, reputable third party authenticators out there. Um, so, you know, choose wisely, you know, when you're, when you're having it authenticated. And I think, it, I think it made a good point about reputation because I think in the internet world and everything else, I mean, yes, you could go to like a small little show or something this way and these fly-by-night guys that are doing these these forgeries in their basement and selling, oh yeah, David Tennant's autograph for, you know, 30 bucks or whatever. I, I think we're getting to the point where if someone begins to just take that first extra step of care and caution, they can immediately find, you know, an outfit like you that, that's that's entrenched has reputations oh, okay this is a this is a this is a name i can trust no doubt and i think i think that's the, i think that's the nice thing about all this too is that we're for it's leveling off we're getting to the point too where there's forums like yourself to say like, no none of, none of that bullshit bull cocky you know that or two this 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 comes with a this comes with the document it's good you know it's good Absolutely. And, it, and another good thing about submitting items, you might not realize that an autograph is so valuable until you bring it to a reputable authenticator and they let you know, hey, you have, you know, you have a thousand dollar item here. And they're like, what? I've had that happen so many different times. I, I thought that I was going to price that at $50. No, this, this is very rare. This is usually secretarial and, you know, you have a, you have a gem here. So uh, just another reason to get your items checked out and uh, so, peace of mind. Uh, so, yeah. Go ahead. What are you saying, buddy? I was about to say, uh, if, if you had the ability to have walk-in business, I mean, you'd have three quarters of your own reality series right then and there. Uh, People bringing stuff in and then you tell them yay or nay. And, and yeah, you know. When this all goes away, we'll, we'll do something together. Galaxy Con and JSA. Oh, God. So... Yeah. So it's SpenceLOA.com is the website, right, James? Yes, yes. So SpenceLOA.com. And uh, you can go there. You can uh, you can check out what JSA has to offer and uh, and get your th your stuff authenticated. Um, I think um, you know in a in a especially now 
God only knows when we're going to get back to doing live events, right? And so it's been a great run for the, you know, for being able to go up and see celebrities, get your stuff signed, um, you know, in person. But now that, you know, it's going to be a while before a lot of these bigger names are going to be going to shows, you're going to have to rely on, you know, uh, uh, private signings, finding things on eBay. You know, we're doing a lot of autographs through the mail now with, you know, our virtual events. And we offer the authentication at the end uh, for people, so they so it's in the database. But I think that the the importance of the authentication, um, the importance of authentication in a post COVID world, when you're when you're not going to be able to see a lot of these people in person for a while, and people still want to add to their collection, especially with Funko Pops or whatever, I think it's it's important that they they look to have something that you know gives them peace of mind. That they're not buying something for a lot of money that, you know, two, three, five, 10, 20 years from now, they're going to be like, oh, well, this is junk. Yeah, no, you, you nailed it. I mean, it's if you can't see the item get signed, even though you're you're acquiring it from a reputable company like GalaxyCon, it still just gives you that comfort. Oh, JSA, they hired JSA to, to certify this item, too. Now I could sleep well at night and know my signed Funko is, is authentic and I could pass it down to whoever. Um, or I can, you know, sell it in a couple of years, wait for it to appreciate. Um, so that, that kind of stuff is just so, so important, especially right now, Mike. Uh, real quick before we go, uh, we do have a couple of questions out of the uh, chat room area. Uh, one guy, Jeff, he comes right and asks, like, should I stay away from flat items because of the auto pens out there? I mean, real quick, uh, could you give everybody just a quick crash course on if they're going to, say, buy blinds either on eBay or uh, from a vendor are there some serious red flags that you know of that they should be aware of? Well, eBay makes it very, um, very uh, a safe to buy from because you have all this protected, you know, you can put pay through PayPal and everything's protected. Um, but it can't hurt if you see something that you want on eBay, shoot the guy a message and say, do you guarantee this to pass JSA? Mm. Um, if the guy knows that he has a real item, he's going to say, go for it. You know, I know the guys at JSA, they're, they're going to pass that thing with flying colors. You want that confidence out of the seller. If you have any type of hesitation, there's really no need for that. I mean, we've been in business for 15 years. You know, we know what we're doing. Um, no, I, I, no, I, I did that alone. I, I actually, and, and getting back to James's point, there are so many, like I see it all the time because I, I, you know, I collect stuff as well. And I have, I have signed pieces and, you know, mainly the things I like, I like to get, I like to get posters signed, right. I like to get original posters signed by people, you know, um, and uh, that's my jam, but the, uh, but you see, you see stuff up, up online where you go, there's no, way, there's no, you're selling that for 50 bucks. I got one guy selling that for 250 and then I got this other guy selling it for 50 bucks. And the only difference is, that there's an, there's an authentication involved, and you just look at that fifty dollar one. You go, why are you giving this thing away? Yeah, there's usually a very good reason for that. If you see yeah. a full cast signed casino movie poster that's signed by Pesci and you know <laughs> De Niro and, and the entire cast, okay, right? Or you know, when we've had it at the shows, or we've had dealers who set up that are disreputable dealers. We had to throw a couple out over the years. That you know, oh, they've got this big signed Guardians of the Galaxy you know, peace. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've got actors from the movie, you know, I've got Batista in the building going, yeah, that's not my signature. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and it's signed by people that really hard to get some signatures, you know, and, and we were talking earlier about how some people are just much harder than others. You, you collect James Bond things, mm -hmm. James Bond stuff. And you're saying how Dalton is, is the toughest bond to get because he's just reclusive. Yeah, without a doubt, Timothy Dalton is just is impossible. I mean, you, you have to look on eBay and just compare and contrast to you know what's re, you know authenticated by a reputable company. Um, you, you're gonna find just a very finite group of things, and this guy's still alive, and he's probably doing you know very well. I don't know where he lives right now, but um, he just doesn't. He's not into the whole autograph thing, and he, I guess he just doesn't want to meet people and or even do it do it privately. James, and, what and and hang on and, and Patty, so you know you're you were seeing things, you know, online for, for Dalton that are, you know, not 
not cheap, but then you're seeing things that are like, you know, a hundred dollars. Yeah. Like a PPK signed by Timothy Dalton for $200. Yeah. 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 Right. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's challenging. Yeah, it is. Um, but it, it, that would be my, my advice to, you know, don't stay away from all flat items because of auto pens or anything like that. Um, there's a lot of reputable companies out there. Um, again, they all don't use um, uh, proper authentication. However, you know, there's, there's good people that, that do sell on and, uh, yeah. and I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't avoid all flat items and join. There are collector groups. You can join and talk to people about the dealers. I mean, the, yeah. the people know who the reputable autograph dealers are and they know just like in comics, we know who the guys are that are, that are doing homemade restoration on books. And that's why they're not CGC. Oh, look at this comic. It's, it's a beautiful, you know, uh, VFNM. You know, it's a 9-0, and it's like, well, how come you didn't get it CGC'd? And it's like, oh, you know, I don't need to CGC. I graded myself. And you're like, oh, it's because, you know, you, you did some color touch here, and yeah. you trimmed it over here, and the average person isn't going to catch it. Yeah, it's a shame. And and I hate giving bad news, but it is a part of my job. And sometimes yeah. people think it great. Other times they angry. Uh, run out of my office and find the guy that sold it to them, and it's yeah. – uh, but the best thing, like if, if something does fail uh, our authentication process, the best thing to do is just reach out to the, the person you bought it from and try to settle it uh, amicably. Um, if not, just go through PayPal and always purchase autographs with a credit card because your credit card's got your back. Um, I'm sure you guys have been in situations where you're like, I can't get any, you know, I can't get a response from this guy. I'm just going to contact my credit card and do a chargeback. And uh, <clears throat> Fortunately, you know, that works out most of the time. And I, and I, and again, even if you have bad news, you give why just the same way as you give something that gives credence to its authenticity, you give very strong proof that I could turn to my credit card company or PayPal to say, this didn't pass the muster. I was failed a false item and let's get this rolling. Yeah. So. And, that, and that's another important thing. You have your items authenticated. If you ever want to put them on insurance rider, Insurance companies are now asking for proper authentication. So, yep. you know, they don't want to shell out a million dollars on a bunch of BS. I, I, I walked into collections where I, I walked into a collection. It was all guitars. They had Pink Floyd, he had Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix. I've never seen a signed Jimi Hendrix guitar before. I don't mm -hmm. think one exists. You know, he had Nirvana guitars, all sorts wow. of stuff that he was, he was purchasing. And he, the unfortunate thing, he was purchasing it all from the same person. And every single guitar failed, even his journey guitar, even his Boston guitar. Um, you know, it was, it, was, it was unfortunate, but he was able to get his money back. He was able, you know, the guy was still in business and he, he handed him a pile of rejection letters. And he goes, I don't want any of this stuff. I just want my money back. And wow. fortunately, the dealer settled it with him. So, wow. you know, that, that was a, a good story in the end, but. You can only imagine how this guy was feeling when we laid out the news for him. Yeah, so. yeah. So I, I gotta ask James, um, what's, uh, what's your holy grail? What's something that uh, you' pretty sure is floating around out there that you don't have but you'd love to? Um, my God, huh? You know, I see, I see everything. Probably like, uh, you know, I collect a lot of vinyl. I, I like music. Um, signed by by all different bands that i love yeah. i would absolutely love like one of my favorite bands is uh sublime and i would absolutely love a bradley knoll signed um you know one of, one of the earlier ones um you know uh 40 ounces of freedom or something like that i mean if i if i could ever find something like that that would be that would be it for me i don't think i would need to collect anymore <laughs> I love this stuff. I can't oh, it good. And yeah, well, uh, talk to me about all your Schwarzenegger stuff you talked about. Daddy, what, what about you? What's your holy grail? Oh, uh, autograph wise or yeah. just collectible wise? We're talking autographs. Wise. Autograph -wise? Autograph -wise. We're talking autographs. Um, I I have I have seen you, the you pictures of like the Universal Monster actors like Karloff mm -hmm. and Lugosi and Lon Chaney. I have seen pieces. I don't know if they're authentic. But I have seen some pieces that have been autographed by all of them. Having one of those, I think, would would that would that that would that I could go to heaven happy. 
Yeah, uh, Patty, message me and I'll direct you in the right location. We we authenticate Boris Karloff's fairly easy, you know, to get um, Lon Chaney. Oh, Lon Chaney really not too hard. Lon Chaney Jr. And then there's Lon Chaney Jr. So you can't uh, and and they have very different autographs. So, yes. um, but uh, yeah, that stuff's all accessible. It's out there, but to find them all in one though, uh, well, especially that's, they, I, I've never seen that before. I, I've seen I've seen pictures, and again, they could have been complete butkus. And yeah, if it exists, I'd love to have it, but I'm I'm not even sure it really might exist. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm doubtful, but you know, if you yeah. ever see a dual signed, James, this is what I need. This is what I need from you, James. <laughs> if you ever hear tell of a dual signed Charlton Heston? Orson Welles, anything from Touch of Evil. Okay. You let me know. I will look in our exemplar database tonight for you, Mike. Be very careful of Charlton Heston secretarials. I know. I know. I know the whole story. Okay. I'm just, it, it's a very easy uh, way of de determining a Charlton Heston secretarial. I'm going to end it with this. Um, the R and the L, when you see the R and the L that are the exact same size – it's secretarial. If you see the L significantly taller than the R in Charlton, it's it's likely real. Okay. The secretaries are very, very talented. I mean, they've they've fooled a reputable authentication companies, you know, ten years ago. And I think the, the autograph study uh, happened, and you know, a lot of enthusiasts will will perform an autograph study on, on one individual. And, um, you know, this, this is a forever learning process. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. I'm, I'm about to, to drop a, an Arnold Schwarzenegger autograph analysis. Uh, Ooh, I just have cool. to find the time to, to finish my article. So you guys will see that soon. Are you, uh, are you, uh, are you gonna, do you know Rick Henricks? I've heard of that name. Yeah. Rick's, a, Rick's a town agent. He works with a bunch of like the stranger things kids. Okay. Uh, He's a big Arnold guy. He's got like a, he's the biggest Conan collector I know. Wow. So he's a big, huge Conan the Barbarian movie guy. Not, not the Robert Howard stuff, but the Arnold stuff. And he's a big oh, yeah. Arnold guy. Yeah. I've got to, I've got to show him some stuff that I have. I mean, I have period signed on, on, um, uh, original stock paper of Conan at, at sign when, you know, when he was in the seventies. Um, nice. I have one signed by Wilt too. So cool stuff that we see. Very cool. All right. You're going to let me know if you find anything with Heston and Orson Welles together. I'm looking tonight. Um, <laughs> all right, man. So what's, uh, what's, we're going to run uh, the end here and uh, we'll meet backstage after this is over, but I want to thank you for taking the time with us tonight. Absolutely guys. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah, it was Absolutely. great. And, Very uh, illuminating. Thank you. You know, we always like to talk about the business behind the business. So this is, just another aspect of uh, of this crazy business. It's crazy, but it's a lot of fun. All right now, I have to figure out how to do the. Uh, all right, so I'm going to do the outro. So good good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Good night, guys.